that's that's fine by me. All right, well, since, since you said you like talking boxing, let's talk about the big matches that are coming up. Obviously, the biggest one coming up is July 29th, Earl Spence versus Terrence Crawford. Yeah. You've been in the ring with Earl and everything, so you could actually speak personally on it. How do you see that fight going? What do you see the pros and what do you see the cons for each fighter? I think it's a very, very even fight. Just like everybody knows, they're the best guys at Walterweight. Um, they've been dominating the division for, for many years now. Um, it's a very evenly matched fight. I mean, it's hard to pick a side. If I look at it a little deeper, then for some reason I'm, I'm, I'm leaning a little bit towards Crawford. But it's it's very, very close. I think Crawford can do a few things, maybe a little bit more than, 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 than what Spence is able to do. But it's, it's not going to be... Uh, a one-sided match. I think it'll be very, very close. Um, I think everybody wants to see that fight because they are the best in the division. They've been dominating, like I said, for many years, and we finally get to see it. So in the end, you know, the fans, including myself, we're the winners. We get to see it. With that said, we all know it took uh, Pacquiao and Floyd a few years, five years, to get it going and everything. Do you think this fight is happening at the perfect time right now? I think I think it is. Um, they're both still in their prime. We haven't seen a decline in either one of them. Um, I think I think it's, it's the perfect timing for it. And if it didn't happen now, it might have you know never happened. Because who knows? Maybe Spence would move up in weight class, or by the time Crawford moves up, maybe Spence is no longer there. You never know. So I think it's perfect timing right now. What are your thoughts on basically? You two fighters, Jake Paul and everything, and what he's been doing, the thing that he's been, you know, putting more eyes to the sport, fighting, uh, you know, NBA players, MMA fighters and everything, and finally losing to a real fighter in uh, Tommy Fury. What do you think about those things? Look, it's, it's a whole different um, audience that he's pulling into the sport of boxing, which only helps all the fighters, all the boxers. And he's actually highlighting a lot of younger, up-and-coming fighters that wouldn't get the spotlight if it wasn't for him. So I, I'm actually for it. What I'm not for is when when they try to claim that they are also at the level of top elite fighters. When he says, you know, when, when any of these YouTube guys say they're ready to face top world-class boxers, like, that's all just, you know, for sure. Because in reality, there's no way you feel you're ready for something like that. Um, but if you're fighting your own level of, of, of experienced fighters or, or pro MMA fighters or previous, you know, some that's fine. Go ahead, entertain everybody, have fun, you know. And, and you're bringing a new audience to, to, to the sport. It's only when they're claiming that they're capable or just as good as some of these world champions or top fighters. Put some respect, because there's, there's no way you're gonna be able to do that. And you saw it with, when, as soon as he faced Fury, you know, who's not even a, 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 a top, top, top level, but he yeah. is a professional. He is uh, a, a well-rounded boxer, and you, you saw the, the difference right away. You know, so that that should tell you. But um, I'm I'm okay with him fighting. Like I said, it's, it's highlighting a lot of young young talent and and bringing a new audience to the sport. As you see, we have uh, Nate Diaz here today and everything at the gym. Uh, Nate his, himself, he has a lot of professional, not professional fighting or boxing, but he no, does, he, he has trained. Fighter. Yeah, he has he's trained with he's Andre a, Ward before former, and everything. Former UFC and, 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 and he's boxed a lot because <laughs> in MMA, he, obviously you need boxing skills and he's a fighter. He's, he's, he's been in it with the very best in, in MMA and he's also boxed, you know, for, for training. So... It's not just another guy that's a former basketball player or YouTuber getting in the ring. I think it's, it's actually a pretty even matchup. I was very impressed with him going 12 rounds just on Wednesday. Sparring, yeah. Sparring against uh, one of our guys here, Falcao. Falcao. Who's fucking fighting for a world title in a few weeks. You know, and, and for someone, I've never seen another fighter going into camp, you know, two, two months you know, and, and already going to a round. That just tells you the endurance, the conditioning, you know, that Nate has. So he can only get better from this point on because he's only going to get better. He's only going to get crisper. He's only going to be cleaner in his punches and selection. So 
I think he's, he actually has a very good chance of actually winning based on what I've seen with, with you know, Jake in his last one. You know, it, all it took is a little bit of boxing and, and he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't compete. So I, I'm actually thinking Nate is going to surprise a lot of people. He is, you know, an MMA fighter, but he has boxing behind him. Yeah. So, and he's doing it so early. He's done it all his, his life, you know, so it's not like he's fighting, like I said, one of these other MMA fighters that never really boxed, that were never known for fighting. Yeah. You know, so he, he is. And finally, let's talk about the news everybody's talking about. More than likely, we're going to get Canelo versus Charlo. Charlo hasn't fought in two years, but still, he's a really good fighter, well-rounded guy. You know, he's got the accolades at 160 and everything. The fight will more than likely be at 168, and more than likely will end up in Texas. What are your thoughts on that fight? Well, if, if it does go down, um, I'm picking Canelo. I think I think uh, it's a very good matchup because I've seen Charlo. Obviously, we've all seen him, and he's, he's a very very well-rounded fighter. And, He's, he's, he's a very good fighter, but um, the inactivity and him moving up in weight class might hurt him. Um, and even though Canelo didn't look the great the greatest in his last performance, I, it was still enough to win. But uh, I, I think Canelo at 168, I don't see anybody right now still giving him that kind of trouble, especially not someone moving up in weight class. Because um, Charlo... Even though he's, 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 you know, one of the very best fighters also, but he's been an actor for, for so long, and that, that plays, you know, a big, big role. Um, so I, I, would, I would say Canelo. You said you don't see anybody at 168 challenging Canelo. You don't see Benavides there yet? I mean, Benavides could, but I don't think that's going to happen. Why not? Because I think, I think uh, Benavides is, is, is a bigger threat, so I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I mean, he, if he did fight him, that's, that's a tough fight. That's a tough fight for, for Canelo at this point. Two fights ago, a year ago, I would have said Canelo. At this point, that's a tough one. But other than that, like I said, I mean, Canelo's the champion at, at, at 68, and, you know, he's, he's been there. He feels very natural there. He feels strong, and that's where he's done probably his most damage, you know, I, I don't see anybody else. Even though he looked, he didn't look that great. I, I think you no, know, there's no one else out there like that. So Benavides would be the only exception, but I just don't see that happening. And finally, what do you want to let your fans know? People that have followed your career from the beginning, some people that may have came in late and everything in your career. What do you want to let the fans know? You know I, I appreciate all the love and support they showed me, and and uh, I appreciate everybody who, who followed my career, who supported me, and. And like I've always said, you know, I wouldn't be who I am, I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for them. So I really, you know, give thanks to everybody. Um, I'm done, I'm no longer boxing, but I still get a lot of people messaging me and, you know, showing that love. So I really appreciate it. Thanks for your time, Mikey.